Eric Darling here with Darling Data. And in today's video, we're going to get into the weird, wild world of API cursors. Now, uh, this is something that most people who use SQL Server have never heard of and uh, probably have never used. If you're the type of person who uh, just has the standard Pavlovian response of seeing a cursor declared or used anywhere and complains and gripes about it, uh, this is not the video for you. Um, I don't like you much. Uh, <clears throat> so there's that. Uh, we're going to talk today about how uh, API cursors can be used to, uh, in, a, in, a, in ways to uh, traverse more than just a row at a time. This is, not, this is not a row by agonizing row thing. We can actually process, select, modify multiple rows at a time using API cursors. But we're going to have to do a little, we're going to have to do a little bit of uh, digging into the vaults to, um, to understand what's going on here. So uh, with that out of the way, if you like this content, and you would like to support my efforts to bring you high quality SQL Server content like this, uh, you can sign up for a channel membership, link right down in the video description. Uh, if you are too poor because you spent all your money griping about, uh, about cursors in SQL Server to some LLM, trying to get it to write a blog post for you, well, there are the ways to support the channel. You can like, you can comment, you can subscribe, and you can ask me questions. Uh, privately that I will answer publicly during my office hours episodes. If you need help with SQL Server, uh, performance help with SQL Server, uh, I can do all this stuff and of course is mentioned, is rated by Beer Gut Magazine to be the best SQL Server consultant in the world outside of New Zealand. Uh, today's uh, video will of course um, help establish why outside of New Zealand is particularly important to that distinction. Uh, if you would like to get some very high quality, very low cost SQL Server training content, you can get all 24 hours of mine uh, for about 150 US dollars um, and you get that for life. There is no return fee on that. Uh, the link is up there, the discount code is there, of course all fully assembled for you down in the video description. Of course, uh, if you would like to hang out in person uh, and, I don't know, high five, take selfies, sign autographs, um, I don't know, ask me how to set max stop. Uh, you can, of course, come to SQL Saturday New York City 2025, taking place on May the 10th in lovely Times Square, Manhattan at the Microsoft offices. I think it's 11 Times Square. Uh, if, you, if you go to my website, there's a link up in the corner for all that stuff. So go there. Um, if you don't know what my website is, well, geez, that's a, that's a scary thought scary thought. Anyway, let's talk about API cursors. So uh, before I show you my thing, what I want to show you is where I learned about API cursors from and um, like why, like sort of like why I got interested in them because I think they're just bizarrely interesting things. So uh, Paul White from New Zealand has a couple blog posts, or not a couple blog posts, has a couple uh, Q&As on the database administrator Stack Exchange site. Now, I want you to pay careful attention. I'm not logged in up here, right? There is a login prompt. So I don't want you to think that like, I haven't, uh, I haven't upvoted these questions because I, and when I'm logged in, I, you will ap absolutely will see that these things have been upvoted um, to the nth degree. Uh, I will put the, the links to these questions in the, uh, the video description, hopefully, if I remember. We'll see. Uh, but anyway, if we scroll down here to the answer, uh, we will get to uh, what Paul said. And uh, of course, this is exactly the behavior of an appropriately configured API cursor. Now, if you look at this code, it is some of the most outlandish stuff I have ever seen written, right? We have some things declared and set using these horizontal lines, some sort of bit XOR bitwise something or other to make numbers out of multiple numbers that make sense to, to, to API cursors. And then there are some store procedures like SP cursor open, 
an SP cursor option, an SP cursor fetch. And uh, I believe I don't, it's not this one. There's also an SP cursor close. So this is where I first saw anything about API cursors. Now, if you work with SQL Server and you work with like a vendor product and you see lots of queries running like fetch API something, 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 they are using API cursors, but they are probably not using correctly configured API cursors. They are probably using just whatever stock crap they came up with. Um, the Microsoft, as we'll see in a moment, the Microsoft documentation on API cursors is not good. Uh, this is the other answer I saw where uh, Paul brought up API cursors. I'm, I think I don't think there are any others on Stack Exchange. There are probably some elsewhere in the world, but a favorite. Look at that. Look at that delicate U in there. Favorite solution of mine is to use an API cursor. Uh, didn't mention anything about it being correctly configured in this case, but we can assume because it's Paul it is correctly configured. Uh, but it uses sort of the same set of store procedures there. And uh, there is this absolutely wild thing. Well, cursor status global my cursor name equals one. Uh, keep going and finding things. So if you want some background and you want to see some API cursor code, the links to these will be in the video description. Now, the Microsoft documentation on API cursors is incredibly sparse. Like you'll get some, like you'll get like valid stuff in here, but there's really no mention of like, and, and like correctly configuring them. Like you get a lot of information about cursor stuff, which like, if you understand cursors generally, would make makes more sense to you. But if you don't understand cursors generally, and you're the type of person who just, again, has the dog whistle response to like, oh, cursors. Ugh. No, there's, there's very little hope for you anyway. Uh, there's SP cursor. So we just looked at cursor open. This is SP cursor, which has sort of the same set of stuff in there. And then we have SP cursor fetch, which does a whole bunch of other stuff. There are other SP cursor uh, procedures uh, in, the, in the mix, of course. Um, there are all sorts of weird things you can do with cursors that you probably didn't know you could do. So we have, there, there's, there's, a, there's a wide world out there. Now, what I wanted to show you uh, is the thing that I wanted to do. Now, this is in no way supposed to um, uh, besmirch the, the wonderful Michael J. Swart post about batching modifications. This is just an alternate approach to batching modifications. Um, not to say that you need to do this when you batch modifications, but you might be able to have some fun with it at some point in your life. So I'm going to walk through the code, and then I'm going to run the code. And I'm going to point out exactly where I got a little assistance with the code because things were kind of annoying. So uh, I am creating a table of sample data. That much should be very obvious. Uh, I'm going to put 10,000 rows into the sample data. And uh, in those 10,000 rows, I'm going to mark 5,000 of them as needing an update, right? So uh, case when this number, the, the modulus 2 equals 0, then 1. So out of the 10,000 rows, like, Five of them will have five thousand of them will have the needs update set to one from, based on this row number. All right. Uh, when that after that finishes, we're going. To, I'm going to show you the five thousand rows that need an update, and then we are going to get into the cursor stuff. Now, the goal of this cursor is to update one thousand rows at a time. All right. And we're gonna we're gonna handle that with some of these fancy parameters in here. Now, this is again not for the faint of heart. This is a very difficult to follow set of things. There are a lot of things to declare and keep track of, but here is our query that runs when the cursor runs. Uh, we are also going to declare this dummy table. And the purpose of this dummy table is to eat results. So usually on every time, that, on every execution of these cursor procedures, SQL Server returns a result set from the cursor. I don't want to see that because I want, like, I, like, rather, I didn't want to see that because I was like, you know, like, they just clog up the screen. It looks, looks silly. It makes me, you know, gives me the, 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 the face vibrations I don't like. And so Paul suggested doing the insert top zero into dummy when executing the procedure. All right. So if that looks just stunningly out of this world insane to you, that's, that's what that's doing. That's the purpose of that. Uh, on 
each trip through the cursor, um, I'm going to select a row count so you can see that a thousand rows come out of a thing. Um, uh, there, I'm, I'm going to put this on GitHub. I usually don't, but this is so weird that, you know, screw it. I'm going to put it out there. Uh, and so this is what does the update in here. And this is so bizarre. This is so weird, right? Uh, I have to tell it which table to update, which I guess technically I can put an empty string in here because there's only one table, but whatever. Uh, and then here's what I'm doing. I'm setting the price times 1.10. I'm setting last updated to sys date time, and I am setting needs update needs update to zero. Okay. So uh, then I'm gonna I'm gonna show you via the row count big function that how many rows I do at a time. Uh, we're going to fetch the next batch, and we're gonna do all this stuff. And then at the very end. I am going to show you, uh, I'm going to verify that the updates rang. So if you are all ready to see this happen, let's run this and let's, let's admire these results for a moment. So these are the 5,000 rows that need an update, right? Uh, you'll see that this, like just looking at the top, like I guess there's eight visible rows here. We have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, pretty much counting by twos, right? These are all the ones that needed an update. Here's the original price, the original quantity. I didn't change quantity, of course, just, just price. And then down here, you'll see that uh, these numbers did go up, or, or rather these numbers did change, right? So this is the last query that shows the data that I just messed with. Uh, product 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 16, the prices are all 1.10 higher and the, need, the, the last updated has been incremented to today and the needs update is now set to zero. So these went from 2024, 630 to 2024, 317. So this did work. And if we look at the five uh, calls to row count in here, there's 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. So I updated these 5,000 rows, 1,000 rows at a time, and I did that using an API cursor. This, this type of syntax is not available, uh, rather this type of behavior is not available using a stock and standard cursor. Uh, you do have to get into the weird world of API cursors in order to do stuff like this. So um, when do you use these? Um, probably when you have gotten to the point where uh, you cannot be satisfied by normal queries. <laughs> I get a thick callus for stuff in SQL Server these days, and this was this was this was a nice way to sand that callus down and, and feel things again. Um, so you know, uh, of course, uh, thank you to Paul for the assistance with uh, some of the code in here, and of course for publishing the original answers that opened up my my world and mind to um, to to API cursors. And uh, yeah, um, I hope I hope that. Uh, this will encourage you to, to keep learning about things in SQL Server because there are all sorts of interesting things you can do once you, once you peel the world back a little bit. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. I mean, I'm pretty sure you learned something. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. And uh, oh, again, the, the links to the code and to the, uh, the original DBA Stack Exchange questions so you can read more about um, uh, API cursor stuff uh, will be in the video description. But again, this is a weird one. I admit it. I fully and totally admit this was a weird video, but it was something that I was I was rather proud to, to show off because um, most of the stuff that I do is pretty much like, you're going to see this every day and it's going to be a problem. This is nice and weird. Anyway, I'm out of here. I'm going to go unweird myself a little.